Welcome back to the Let's Ditch Misophonia channel. In today's video, we're going to talk about sensitivity to sound. Why does it happen? What can you do about it? And in today's video, I'm actually going to be using some notes. I typically just kind of go off the top, but actually I do have some notes for today's video. So if you found this video because you are experiencing sensitivity to particular sounds, or maybe you know someone who does, Let's talk about, again, why does this happen and what can you do about it to get relief? So first I wanna say, sensitivity to sound, or also known as misophonia, M-I-S-O-P-H-O-N-I-A, can feel incredibly isolating and maybe not like something that you wanna talk about or something that you wanna share. And because noises are everywhere and they're all around us all the time, it's really difficult to escape them if you're spending time with, with other people, unless you want to ask them to stop making noises every five seconds. And so the sensitivity can feel really isolating, but the one thing that I think is, is really helpful to know is that you are not alone and you are not the only person experiencing this. I know growing up, I felt like I was crazy or there was something wrong with me, but you are not the only one. This is a real thing that people experience it and also know that you are not stuck with it for the rest of your life. And if you want to get rid of it, if you want to eliminate it, if you want to get relief from it, that is possible. The thing about misophonia is it can be really difficult to describe because if you don't experience it from the outside looking in, it probably seems really bizarre. Like, why is a noise that I don't even notice, why is that driving this person crazy? Why is that causing them such pain? You know, it's something that, that happens automatically. This person isn't deciding to be frustrated or annoyed by a particular noise. It happens like that. And there are a lot of patterns and programmings that our mind create for us to make our lives easier. So just think about your drive to work, for example. You probably take the same route every single day if you work in an office. And you might be able to drive from your home or apartment or wherever to work without even thinking about how you got there. You, you don't have to think about each individual turn, every street, every lane you need to be in. Your mind just does it for you automatically. And that is what misophonia is. It's another one of those patterns that's running on autopilot. Now, the good news is that we have the ability to uninstall things that are no longer serving us. Just like on a computer or your laptop, if there's a program that you no longer need, you can uninstall that to create space for the things that you do want to experience or the programs that you do need on your computer. My mom was the person for me who discovered that this experience actually has a name. And at the time it was selective sound sensitivity syndrome or 4S is also how it was known. And just knowing that there was a term for it gave me, I it just, it, it validated what I was experiencing. Because it, again, like I said, if you don't experience it yourself, it can be really difficult to understand what someone is going through and why their mind is responding the way that it is. And so I'm really grateful that my mom was able to find that term and, and kind of show my family, look, this is this is real. There are other people just like Brooklyn who who are going through this. And also a downside is that there really weren't that many resources at the time. There wasn't much known about misophonia or selective sound sensitivity syndrome. There weren't very many resources available. My therapist at the time had not even heard of it. So yes, I had some validation in terms of, oh, this is a real thing, but also it was frustrating because now that we had a name for it, we could see, oh, there's actually nothing that we can do about it. And that was really disappointing. The good news now, though, is that it's being researched more and more, and there are treatments and methodologies out there to help you get relief. And I was able to eliminate my own misophonia for myself after suffering for more than 20 years. It, it, it ruined my life in a lot of ways. Would I take it back? No, because it's made me an incredibly strong individual, and now I get to do the most fulfilling work I've ever done as a coach. And at the same time, it really disrupted a lot of my life. The good news is though, I was able to eliminate it. I've been able to help several clients get freedom from misophonia. And I've been able to help more than 400 people through the resources that I offer. So 
know that if you found yourself here and this is kind of all new to you and, and you're feeling stuck or you're feeling like there's nothing that you can do, if you're willing to commit to the process, if you're willing to engage in the work that can that can help you uninstall this pattern, then relief is absolutely, totally on the table and possible for you. And to get you started, especially because if you are watching this video, it's likely that maybe you know someone who experiences this or maybe this is new for you and you're just kind of discovering the community and the terminology and the language. I wanna support you in your journey to relief. So be sure to check out the description of this video. There is a link where you can download my free PDF. It's called, I believe it's called the free PDF to end your misophonia suffering spiral. I'm pretty sure that's the name, but what I do know for sure is what is on the inside of this free resource. And that is three steps that are going to be different, easier, and more effective than anything you've tried before to get relief from misophonia. And this is all based on the work that I did for myself and also the work that I did with my early one-on-one -on -one clients to develop this framework that's really effective at helping you ditch misophonia and be able to just exist around noises like everyone else around you and just be indifferent or maybe even feel a sense of joy hearing a sound that used to trigger you and realizing oh shit, like I'm okay, I'm, I'm fine now. So definitely check out the show description and make sure you download that PDF to get started and be sure to subscribe to this channel, the Let's Stitch Misophonia channel. I have so many videos to support you in lessening your triggers, alleviating your suffering from misophonia and creating more joy in your life. So thank you for watching and I'll catch you in another video.